Hey, everybody. Locked on Bama is back. Yes, I'm aware we've been gone for four days. Yes, I'm also aware I look like the guy who looks like a, the strawberry smoothie or strawberry fluffy. What do you call those things at Wendy's? Whatever that commercial is. That's what I look like. You are Locked on Bama, your daily podcast on the Alabama Crimson Tide. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, everybody, and welcome back into Locked On Bama. Luke Robinson, that's me, and Jimmy Stein, that's him. Jimmy, what do they call the thing? A Frosty. It just dawned on me. A strawberry Frosty. You've seen the Wendy's commercial? I got sunburned really badly today. We were taking out the fountain at Montgomery Court Square, and zero of y'all care about that because we've been gone for four days because I was also in New York, and uh, we got delayed like nobody's business yesterday, so I couldn't get home in time to do a podcast, so we're going to make up for it right now by not wasting any more time with things that don't matter to you, our loyal listeners. folks. So first of all, Jimmy, before we get to Javon Quinterly, who we will get to, we're going to talk some recruiting from this past weekend. It looks like crystal balls are rolling in for Isaiah Faga. I believe I'm saying that correctly from Central Phoenix City. If you've been following this podcast, you know that we have been predicting Isaiah Faga will be a part of this class, and we are both happy about it. He is a defensive mm-hmm. lineman from uh, Central Phoenix City, as I mentioned. If you are a Samoan defensive lineman and Utah wants you, I, Luke Robinson, also want you on my American football team. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, you know, Utah is a really good, solid program. I mean, this is a solid, they're, you know, what I call – the most uh, annually underrated team. And why is Utah good? Why is year after year Utah pretty good? Uh, because they're good at the line of scrimmage. That's why. Just watch them play. They run the ball. They're tough on defense. And why is anybody good uh, if you can run the ball and stop the run? Because you're good up front. And, uh, yeah, that's the kid. He, you know, he's he's a, a athletic uh, I think he's a run stopper. Now, he's going to be an interior pass rusher, too. Love the motor. I think Curtis Perry is a decent comp because the motor is so similar, the relentlessness. But this is a bigger kit than Curtis Perry. He, he is bigger. He, he, he tells uh, BOL uh, when he left campus that he weighed in at Alabama. I think he said he was 6'2", 280 at Alabama. That's a bigger kid than Curtis Perry was at the same age. But he's got – Curtis is just relentless motor. Uh, Utah loves him. Here's who we beat. If you're an Alabama fan out there that, that has two things, you're, you're like not satisfied with what's going on in our defensive line in terms of recruiting the last few. If, if you're that person, I'm not, but if you're, th- I get that. And you're also the person that's like, gosh, I wish we had Bo Davis back. Cause I read that a lot on, on, on message boards and our BOL message board. Well, you know, you know who wanted Isaiah also Bo Davis. So Utah, which is outstanding at the line of scrimmage, they want him. Bo Davis at Texas, he wants him. Uh, yeah, I know where he's ranked right now, and, and he's going to move up. I mean, I think a kid that's committed to Utah that can commit to Texas or Alabama that plays at a 7A school that's one of the better high school programs in the United States of America, I, I think there's a good chance he's going to move up. But uh, I, I've, I like this kid a lot. Uh, I'm excited to get him. Uh, I don't see much of a floor here because when you just watch him, you know what kind of effort you're going to get. This is a relentless effort kid, uh, plays hard, physical, strong. And uh, one brief little inside scoop, uh, our defensive linemen that are currently on the team, they like him. I mean, they liked him. I mean, that that means something to the coaches. They they like this kid. He fits in really well with uh, what we're trying to do. Dad's in the military, you know, so you're you're getting exactly that, a little bit of the stereotype, right? I mean, these effort, high discipline, High, hard-working kids that come from a military family, like a Tyler Steen. Look how good he ended up being. Now a, a third-round pick of the Eagles. So, yeah, I, I think I think Isaiah is going to end up in this uh, Alabama class, uh, and he'll commit. We don't have a date. We, we, we just think it might be something that happens relatively soon. I don't think we'll be waiting until August, for instance. Yeah, boy, that is pretty stereotypical. But again, that's how stereotypes are usually born. They're they're rooted in some kind of truth. And so, again, if you tell me there's a defensive Samoan 
lineman uh, at Central Phoenix City, which is one of the powerhouses in Alabama, which in 7A, if you're a powerhouse in 7A in Alabama, you're a powerhouse anywhere. And yep. if you are have a committable offer to Texas and Utah and your dad was in the military, I don't, and, and you're bigger than Curtis Perry, yet you compare him to Curtis Perry. Right. I don't need to see any highlights. That is enough for daddy. And yes, I'm yeah. calling myself daddy. Um, <laughs> not to him, I mean, to my own children. But um, so, Jimmy, what else happened this weekend? We're going to talk about a bunch of kids. It was a huge weekend. Before you talk about the other guys that were here this weekend, and I want you to do that in the second segment. But I want to say this, that how much should Alabama fans love Julian saying right now? This is a guy that came down for this weekend. He heard about how big the weekend was. So he came down, helped recruit. Um, that's just that's why you go get a quarterback early that you first of all, the quarterback that also happens to be a five star and wins the elite 11. But you go get them early and you allow them to be a Pied Piper. I mean, look, yes, a five star wide receiver, a five star linebacker, whatever. They can also be Pied Pipers, I guess. But quarterback is the most important position in sports, if you ask me. And so when you have a quarterback that's coming in, especially from California, that shows the commitment to fly in from California to Tuscaloosa, Alabama, to meet all these guys that he could potentially be playing with and probably will be playing against some of them eventually. Um, and, but he wants to meet them. He wants to swing for the fences. That, that just tells me we got our dude. We, we got the dude. And, by the way, there was a, some other quarterbacks there that uh, performed very well. I'll let you talk about them in the next segment. But I just want you to uh, reiterate how much everybody should love Julian Sayed. Yeah, it's like uh, he's a five-star superstar prospect. He's a five-star plus, uh, or he's going to be a five-star plus, meaning uh, I think by the end of this cycle, he will be a five-star in every rating industry, and that makes him a five-star pl five-plus with uh, on three. Uh, and he's from California, and he wins the Elite 11, and he is acting like a three-star from Gordo that is just blessed to be here and is the biggest cheerleader we got. I mean, that's what he's acting like. It's just ideal that you get a, a kid with his talent, his charisma, magnetism, that is also the biggest cheerleader in the group that's trying to gather the group together that just gets the list from the coach and it's like, who, who you want me to go get? And, he, and he, he's doing that. He's come from literally, you know, basically San Diego, California, uh, the Southern California area, Tuscaloosa, multiple times now on his own dime. Uh, he's going to officially, he hasn't even officially visited. I, I think he's going to do that during the season. Uh, he's coming back in July for the big July event at the very end of the month. Mm. Uh, by the way, Jimmy, I will stand for zero Gordo slander on this podcast. I'm just yeah. letting you know that's it. That's all the Gordo slander you're allowed. I know you weren't slandering Gordo. Home of Wayne Davis. Yes, true. And his son, Ben Davis, who... I wish the best, too. I wish it had worked out at Alabama. I thought it was. I saw him in the Alabama Mississippi All-Star game. He returned an interception for a touchdown, and it was all downhill from there in terms of Alabama's performance uh, at that particular game. So let me tell everybody about FanDuel because you know how much we all love FanDuel. Look, the College World Series is going on right now as we speak. So I kind of hope you took Florida right now because he just hit another home run. Um, They're hitting home runs like you wouldn't believe. And FanDuel probably would let you bet on how many – uh, home runs they'll hit. Look, you can get up to $1,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't hit. What? I mean, that is awesome. I mean, how, how many people would love a betting mulligan? That's what FanDuel is giving you. And it's a like a $1,000 betting mulligan. You don't want to miss a chance to snag that no sweat first bet up to $1,000 when you join FanDuel today. Just go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel is official partner of Major League Baseball, but they also let you bet on college baseball if you want to. So whatever you want to bet on, go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. On the next few podcasts, we're going to get back into Jimmy Stein's countdown, I swear to y'all. And I'm sorry again for my absence, but we're going to make it up this week. We're going to have extra podcasts. Jimmy said he wants to do four a day. Can't do that, but we're going to we can't. If I got the time, I'll do it. I said he wants to do it. I didn't say we're going to do it. Um, all right, so, Jimmy, talk about some of the other guys that were there this weekend. Look, there were a lot of big dudes, big names there. 
Ellis Robinson, who's committed to Georgia, a defensive back. Uh, Peyton Woodyard, a defensive back, committed to Georgia as well. So just give us the big on three, Jimmy Stein, what you hadn't posted on the message board rundown. Yeah, uh, really, every kid that was there this weekend, I feel like Alabama's got a good shot at every one of them, even though some of them, to some of you, may feel like reaches, like you're talking about Edric Houston or K.J. Bolden. I think Alabama's in the thick of it. Now, I'm not ready to predict they're going to Alabama, but I'm also not ready to predict they're going to Ohio State or they're going to Georgia. I, I, think, they're, I think Alabama's in the thick of it, even for kids like that. I think Peyton Woodyard, from, from the safety from California, that's, I think, one of the very best players in the country, currently committed to Georgia. I think he could flip to Alabama. I think Ellis Robinson, the cornerback committed to Georgia, could flip to Alabama. It, it was a great, great weekend. Nate Frazier, the running back from modern day, uh, who was there with his teammate, the cornerback, Xavier and Brown, they love Alabama. They, even though they're from California, they could easily end up in this class, like the aforementioned Peyton Woodyard from, from California. But the guy I want to talk about for a couple minutes that I think could be committing to Alabama uh, relatively soon that was there this weekend that's a big deal is uh, offensive lineman Casey Poe from Texas. Uh, he is one of the nation's absolute best interior offensive line prospects. By that, I mean, yeah, he's a kid that could probably get away with playing tackle because he's so talented, but he's sort of built to play the guard or center position. Uh, that, that just looks to be like, you know, his, his pro future, if he has one, would be in the interior. On three ranks him extremely high. Uh, as an interior offensive lineman. Let me tell you who we got to beat, who Alabama's got to beat to land Casey Poe is Oklahoma. And I know they're coming off a bad year, you know, and it was because their defense was bad, by the way, not their offense. Their defense was was bad. Venables having to build that really from scratch. But their offensive line over the past six or eight years has produced more NFL players than almost anybody. I mean, they're, they're, they're sort of OLU over the past six or eight you know, NFL cycles, and, and they, they love Casey Poe. Uh, the Texas schools do as well. I, I think it's an Alabama-Oklahoma thing, but I'm thinking Alabama may have cemented it. Uh, he likes Auburn, by the way. I think Alabama may have cemented it this weekend with his official visit. We're, we're starting to predict at the SBOL as a website uh, that follows Alabama football. It's a very good track record at predicting these things. I think we're close to predicting as a site that Casey Poe is going to be committing to Alabama and – Again, he is a major contender to end this cycle as the number one off interior offensive line. Right now, as an industry, we group the guard and center positions together. He, he could be number one uh, in, the, in that group before the, the, the cycle is over. And uh, we really like our chances with him. Great kid. Uh, comes from a family of football players. Uh, and then there's William Sanders, an in-state yeah. offensive lineman who was also here. I mean, you and I were kind of on commit watch. Yeah, uh, a little bit. And, and maybe it happened and it's just not announced or whatever, right. but it just – it won't shock us if he's a part of this class. That's exactly right. And I'm not saying – I don't like that private commitment phrase. I've always hated it. And, and I know it happens. I'm not saying it doesn't happen or it's made up or fiction. I'm not saying that at all. I just don't like it. I don't like talking about it because, A, it's private for a reason, right? I mean, if it is private – we're not going to talk. Let's say it's private and we know about it. We hate to disappoint y'all, but we're not going to talk about it because it means Alabama doesn't want it out. And maybe the kid doesn't want it out. We're not going to say, right? But I'm just saying all that to say I'm really confident that we're going to get this kid. Uh, and, and maybe that's a situation or something, and you're saving the public announcement for a rainy day. But of all of the kids out there that may commit to Alabama, I would put my confidence level at the highest with William Sanders, uh, who, to my knowledge, isn't going on any recruiting trips anymore that's that's not to Tuscaloosa. Uh, also a very good commitment. I know he's not rated super high. He's not going to move the meter much when it comes to these national rankings, Luke. But what more can a kid do than come to Tuscaloosa, do offensive line drills, play the offensive line position directly in front of Nick Saban, and Nick Saban says, I want this kid on my football team. Yeah. I mean, you, you can't do any better than that. And that, that, so that's how good William Sanders is. Nick Saban watched him play in person from a few feet away and was like, I want this kid on my football team. Uh, athlete, also an interior guy to me, like Casey Poe, uh, athletic. That's when I see William Sanders, I'm like, gosh, it seems like that kid might, might should play defense. He's so athletic. And things tend to work out for those offensive linemen who are uber athletic. You know, and it goes back to what we said about stereotypes. I mean, everybody talks about the Bama bump, the Bama bump, and we've talked about this a gazillion times, but I'm going to do it again. 
the Bama bump is real because it makes sense because Bama usually has great players on great teams. Do all of them pan out? Of course not. I mean, Oscar Mayer doesn't make great hot dogs every time. That was awful. I don't know why I came up with that. I could have said Toll House Cookies. I don't know why I went straight to Oscar Mayer. And they're like, "What? we're not even sponsoring you. What are you talking about? Um, But uh, all right, Jimmy, let's go ahead and take another break. When we come back, I want to talk about JQ, Javon Quinterly, who has decided to enter the transfer portal. And uh, it, it is ill-timed, but understood. And we're back. So, Jimmy, we're going to talk about uh, Javon Quinterly, shown here about to dribble the ball off his foot. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, as soon as I downloaded that picture and, like, I said, I'm going to put it up, I, I really, my thought was, yeah, it looks like he's about to dribble it off his foot. And Funny now, you know, it's funny now. It's funny now. Oh, it's not funny. Two days ago, I go, ah, not so funny. Today, yeah, it's funny. Yeah, it's funny. Okay, here's a couple of things that it, a lot of people have beaten this to death already. Um, it wasn't, by the way, it wasn't two days ago. It was like yesterday. My days are running together because I was on the tarmac in New York right. for three hours, then went to the gate for 15 minutes, then went on the tarmac yeah. again for three more hours. Yeah, now uh, it's departure Sunday night around uh, – Seven now, central time. here's what's interesting to me that that nobody's really mentioned. I, first of all, um, Jeff is it Jeff Goodman, right? The the basketball yep. guy on Twitter. He's a pretty good follow, and he's like, "This is sort of not mean. the brother of John Goodman. No relation. No, not not even cousins. Nope, nope, no relation there. Uh, anywho, um, so he he said, "Look, this is kind of BS." And a lot of people have killed him, like, well, what about coaches? They can leave when they want to, and then blah, blah, blah. And his point was, look, I don't care if JQ leaves Alabama. I think that's fine. What, coaches, time, are leaving, what coaches are leaving in June? Yeah, that, that's the other thing. Like, nobody's <laughs> leaving in June. But they, there needs to be some kind of cap on this. There needs not – a, not a cap. And, again, I'm so torn on it because I, I want kids to make money. I mean, I, yes, it's a long time coming, but – can people not see this is nuts? This is this is not good for the game. This is this just isn't. And so I don't mind Javon leaving. I I, I think had he announced he was going to leave when he went uh, to the announced he's going to the NBA draft, said I'm just not coming back, coach. I think Nate Oates would have said, you know, best of luck. You know, good luck. You did all you could. He won us four titles. If you talk, if you look at it like two regular season, two tournament titles. He won us four titles. Took us to two Sweet Sixteens. So, and he didn't take us by himself, but he was a big part. He was the MVP of one of the SEC tournaments. But, you know, number one, if we had known earlier, I wonder how much harder we would have tried to keep Jaden Bradley, who is at Arizona now. Now, JQ and Jaden Bradley are very different point guards, I mean, in, in my opinion. Um, yes. Jaden Bradley is not a shooter. JQ is a pretty good shooter. Uh, oh, yeah. But Jaden Bradley, and both of them like to get to the rim, I guess, but I would call Jaden Bradley a better finisher. Um, so, but I wonder if we would have kept him. And, and even if we don't keep him, who do, who else do we go after? I know we're looking at this Tucson kid from West Virginia, and we may very well end up with him, and he may be good. He, he might be. But we're in a position of, like, is Tucson or bust, kind of, unless we do what somebody else did, which is – painfully obvious. Somebody tampered with JQ. I, I believe that. Now, am I saying it definitively? No, I'm saying I believe it. I'm saying that somebody, and again, I'm not complaining because I'm sure Alabama does this too. So I'm not complaining. I'm just saying, unless we start tampering with somebody like right now, we're going to get <laughs> Tucson or bust. So right. it's, it's really late in the game. It's June freaking 26th. I mean, basketball will be here before you know it. We're trying to develop some continuity. We're still worried about Grant Nelson, who I think we will get sooner rather than later. But, you know, we're trying our best to do, you know, we're over here tampering as hard as we can. We ain't got time to be worried about who's tampering with us. <laughs> we're too busy tampering to pay attention to who might be tampering with us. Yeah, y'all got to. I think it was Goodman that bought it up, and, and we're close to this happening because the rules are so silly. Someone's going to go on one of these European summer trips. They're going to go take their team to Europe, you know, like Alabama did this one year ago. What happens when you take your team to Europe? You come back and 
And some players like, I didn't care for those minutes I got in Serbia. I'm out of here. This isn't working for me. And and one week before the, the fall semester starts and you're getting back from Europe as a team, you already paid to take the kid to Europe and, and like playing games and develop him and showing the Louvre and the sites. And then now he's like, I didn't want my minutes there. I'm out. And it, it's the timing and, and people bend over backwards, you know, for, for these kids and thinking, oh, we've got to level the playing field and make this easier for the kids. Yet, you're, you're, but you're sometimes doing it at the expense of absolutely screwing over the schools because, again, and I'm not saying Quinterly is the greatest player that's ever been. I'm just saying if once the season was over and the season has ended and Alabama loses in Louisville to San Diego State, and three days later, Javon Quinterly says, you know what, I'm going to try the draft, and if that doesn't work out, I'm going to portal somewhere else. That's fine. That's fine. That gives Alabama weeks and months to get into the portal when there's a bunch of kids in the portal and Alabama can replace you with, with a, a veteran point guard, you know, someone else. But the timing of, of JQ leaving has left Alabama in a lurch. And, uh, you know, I know when a little bit of a rant, just a 30 second one, when something negative happens, cause that this is a negative. This wasn't good. This, this was unexpected. This, this caught the staff by surprise, just like the Betty Ako, the staff was caught by surprise. Uh, and, and it's a negative thing. Hey, look, I understand if you're a fan and something negative happens and you can't live in that world, so you must create a, a fictional story to make yourself feel better about what happened. I, I get all that. I, I get that. But, you know, and so, so, but live in reality, too, because the coaches have to and the program has to. This is the reality of the situation we have right now. It's, JQ did not break any rules. And yes, like Luke says about the tampering, that may have happened. It may have happened. I personally also believe it happened. That's my guess, but I have no evidence. I don't know that. And I'm not going to flat out accuse wherever he ends up signing. I'm not going to say, see, here's who's tampering. I'm not going to say that because I don't know that. Do I suspect it? Well, yeah, but we suspect a lot of things that don't end up being true. I'm just saying this. This is the reality. Don't be the fan that's like furious or upset that JQ left, but you're happy that Grant Nelson's coming to Alabama. And Aaron Estrada's coming to Alabama. And Latrell Reitzel's coming to Alabama. I mean, the portal has two doors. We're going to bring in guys that are good, but we're also going to lose guys that we wanted to stay. This is a lot like the Drew Sanders situation, frankly, is what it reminds me of football-wise, where a player walks out the door. We don't want to walk out. We don't like it. I'm sure we tried to talk him into staying. My understanding is he's almost gone to the portal before we've talked him out of it. This time we couldn't talk him out of it. You know, so little like a Drew Sanders here. And guess what? Uh, it, it worked out okay, uh, even to some extent for Drew, to some extent. Yeah, I mean, it, in fact, I think it worked out fine for Drew. Did he go in the first round or second round? I can't remember. Third. third? Round. Did you say third? Third. Lou. Okay, third. maybe it didn't work out as well for him. But, <laughs> you know, JQ is a little different. Because, frankly, and, and again, I am not faulting Javon Quinterly, nor am I accusing him of anything nefarious. I won't, it, I'm not even accusing the team that probably tampered with him of anything yeah. nefarious. Because this is, this is the new age. So yeah. we, need, we need to not be surprised by it. We need to not be upset by it. Again, we do it too. My point is, I'm willing to say now, hey, let's, let's all raise our hand, all of us, and say, we've all done it. Stops now. You know what this reminds me of a little bit? It, it, and, and in a whole nother way, doesn't remind me of it at all. But, you know, the NCAA came out and said, LSU, this is what we're, we're going to nail you to the wall for those violations from six years ago. You're vacating 37 wins. Okay. But here's the problem. See, if I'm the czar of the NCAA, you know what I do? The first thing I do is say, here's the deal. Everybody who had vacated wins, you're getting them all back. You're getting them all back because, you know, they're not they, – they, the other team doesn't get the win. It's like the game never happened. But we all saw the game. Some of us had tickets to the game. Some of us know the score. Some of us have looked it up on YouTube. We know it happened, okay? But it's stupid. So don't do that anymore. What we're going to start doing, if I'm the czar, is say, okay, next time we catch you doing something that we believe is wrong – and right now there's very little that's wrong, by the way. It's like Sodom and Gomorrah out there for college athletics. So <laughs> – you know, if you get caught doing something wrong, it's awful. You're going to pay through the nose. You're going to pay a lot. I'm not taking away scholarships because you know what that does? That hurts that kids. kids. It screws the kids. It's not fair to the kids at all when so you take I'll, away scholarships. What yeah. you, all you're doing is depriving opportunity for some kids that would, that would 
that would gain a lot from attending college. And that's all you're, you've done. That's all you're doing. And even if that means that when I, you know, take away a bunch of money, you can't afford that new weight room. And that means you get a lesser kid. Well, tough. I mean, that's, that's the price you're going to pay for being totally illegal in an environment that really celebrates illegality. So this what, is what I would do. This is what I would do. And I know this sounds nuts, but I think it's a great idea. But this is exactly what I did. So vacating wins is so dumb. If they found 37 games and the NCAA's thing is, hey, LSU cheated to win those games. That's yeah. what they're saying when they – LSU cheated yeah. and they won the games. This is what I would do. Instead of vacating the win against Missouri three years ago, I would have LSU – I would order LSU's athletic department to pay Missouri – to pay Missouri's collective – $100,000, 100000 in Missouri, 100000 in Alabama. Every team you beat where we determine you cheated, you're sending their collective $100,000. That money can be distributed and help their recruiting. That's a great way to stop people from violating rules because when you get caught, all you're doing is helping your rivals recruit. You know and what it is? It's buying your mortgaged property back in Monopoly. That's what this is. When you when you you get caught doing something, you're like, I'm out of money. Here's my property, and then you get some money back. You're like, um, I gotta buy my property back. You're like, it costs a little more this time. It costs more than what you get mortgage it for, or whatever. Okay, that I think. Uh, in fact, I was gonna say a million, but a million is too high. I think a hundred thousand is brilliant. Put it in the collection. Seven wins. That's three point seven million. That's a significant penalty. And 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 I'm sending money to help people. Right. And, and some people say, oh, send it to charity. Yeah, that's uh, fine too. But that's yeah. fine too. But people like sending it to charity. You know who you don't like sending it to if you're Alabama? Auburn. You know, right. if you're Auburn and you get caught cheating and you, you know where you don't want to send your money? To Alabama to help them. And you can't send it to charity stop. anymore because whatever charity you send it to, somebody hates that charity. Whatever charity it is, <laughs> like it doesn't matter. Like there's somebody who hates every single charity because we've ruined charities. Because we, we just have. Um, so I say we send them to the collectives because you're right. You're right. You're so right. God, that's a good idea. We got And that. rushing the field, same way. You beat Alabama, you rush the field, you're fined $500,000. Money payable to Alabama's collective. Oh, God, that's brilliant. Stop that's it. what all this should be. Because everybody be on the field yelling at each other, you dummies, you're just helping them sign the next class. Yeah, they're going to get to run on the field against us next time because they'll have better players because they ball them. <laughs> That's so it brilliant. Would, it would stop the – I think it would be one thing that would help stop, the, 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 to some extent, the tampering, the cheating, if you get caught. Because the thing hating wins is just – It's just so stupid. Dude, it, it's, so, it's the NCAA. You're supposed to be college-educated minds. It's so dumb. Give Reggie Bush his Heisman back, by the way. Get that? That's so dumb. You know, it, 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 it's crazy the pretzels they twist themselves into to do non so punishment for, for violating their worst rules. Because they finally agreed, hey, you know what? When we put these, you know, when you lose 30 scholarships, all we're doing is punishing kids. And then we're punishing kids, and they, they've already fired the coach. It's got nothing to do with who's there now. All those penalties were so stupid. Let's give them some credit. They realize that. Okay, all that's dumb. We're not doing that anymore. So what do they come up with now? Vacating wins. That's it's you just know what it insanely does? dumb. Here's another thing it does. It cheapens what those players accomplished. And you're saying, yeah. well, they did it with cheating players. Well, first of all, they still had to go out there and play the game. So they still had to go on the field. And number two, what if it was for some what if it was for an Alfred Means-esque thing who contributed nada to Alabama? So right. everybody who was associated with Alabama gets associated with Albert Means, and no offense to Albert Means, he was just playing the game like everybody else was. But I'm just saying, anyway, it's so dumb. We can go on for another round on that. We're going to save that for tomorrow. We got more recruiting stuff to go over tomorrow. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk um, some more about your countdown. We got a ton. We're going to do it in the morning too, Jimmy, so you'd be ready, right. damn it. Uh, ooh, I can't cuss. My bad. I'll beep that out. Probably won't. Um, all right. I'll Until tomorrow, everybody, roll tide. Roll tide.